Hey, this is John Frenet, the co-host of the Maryland Crabs, and I am here today with a Maryland Crab Cake for your listening pleasure. What's a crab cake? It's not quite a full episode, it's just a little snippet. Stay tuned and check it out. And make sure you check us out on themarylandcrabs.com. You can follow us on Twitter at MD Crabs Podcast or find us on Facebook at the Maryland Crabs Podcast. And don't forget, subscribe, rate us, iTunes, go there now. Well, joining us today on the phone is Kenny Wayne Shepherd, and he is a blues artist extraordinaire with six number one blues albums and a five time Grammy nominee. Kenny will be playing at the Rams Head on stage in Annapolis on Sunday and Monday. Kenny, thank you very much for taking the time and welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Man. All right. Now, do I, do I have this straight that music sort of ran in your family, your dad being a collector, a radio guy and a promoter? You started playing at age seven, but by age 14, you had a multi-record deal being self-taught on the blues guitar. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, my dad was in radio. He had a massive record collection as a result of it. Um, exposed me to all kinds of music. I mean, we went to every concert that came through town, but yeah, I started playing guitar. Uh, I had little toy guitars when I was four years old. I got my first real electric guitar at age seven. And by the time I was 13, I was playing on stage for the first time. When I was 14, I did my first demo recordings and when i was 15 i put my band together and by the age of 16 i signed a record deal that's phenomenal and since that time i mean and you're you're not you're not old by any means you're 41 you're young you're a you're a kid still if you will (laughs) thanks Uh, but you've played with some legends i mean you got bb king steven stills etta baker barry goldberg what artist you know whether you've played with them or not who do you hold in awe i mean who is like the god of music for kenny wayne shepherd well, I mean, some of those people that I look up to in that regard are no longer with us. You know, people like Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan and, and even B.B. King, who we lost a few years ago. You know, those people were just some of my biggest heroes and uh, inspirations. Um, I mean, I've played with a lot of people over the years. Some of the people that you mentioned, I mean, everybody, it's kind of like runs the gamut. So, like, every, you know, we play with um, – Certainly, most of my heroes that are uh, still alive, you know, throughout the beginning of my career. I mean, we've played with everybody from the Rolling Stones to Van Halen to the Allman Brothers to B.B. King. You know, it's like uh, kind of like a who's who of rock and roll and blues. And, you know, as a kid growing up, listening to all these artists and being influenced by their music and then being out on tour with them and sharing the stage with them. That was like a, a surreal experience, you know. It has to be. You did a, a Reddit Ask Me Anything, an AMA last year. And one of the things I thought was interesting that you said that you play in all sorts of venues from small and intimate to these giant festivals. Um, I don't think you're getting any more intimate than the Rams head on stage for sure. Uh, and I know you've played the Chesapeake Bay Blues Festival. You were just back here in Annapolis back in May. Um, do you have a favorite venue or a festival that you've played that that you're like, OK, this is where I really feel at home? Well, I mean, not, not really. I mean, we're at home wherever the crowd shows up and is is ready to have a good time and hear the music, you know. Um, and that's why, you know, we like playing all different kinds of venues. Now, I will say that normally you won't catch us uh, at many venues that are the size of the Rams head. But, you know, that's there's something special about that place to me. And so it's one of the places that we kind of look forward to coming to the area. We love Annapolis. There's so many times over the years that um, we've gotten to know some of the people in the area. And we just, it was one of those places that were like, you know, pretty large uh, size theaters or the outdoor venues nowadays. And so, but we always keep going back to the Rams here because we have such a good time there. The people there are nice. The venue is, is nice. And it gives us that intimate moment on the tour in a smaller venue that uh, we wouldn't normally have otherwise. So that's your question. To answer your question, I mean, a favorite venue or, you know, a favorite setting. I mean, it's just wherever the fans show up and have a great time. Now, uh, I will say that in America, some of the hardest, you know, like hardest rocking fans out there are in the like in the state of Michigan. It's pretty impressive. Like those people work really hard and they play really hard. And, and it seems like they really live for 
politics, all that stuff, the response from the crowd is always elevated, no matter where you're at in the state of Michigan. It's it's noticeable from the stage. That's wild. It's funny. I was talking to Sarah Petska earlier from the Chesapeake Bay Blues <laughs> Festival, and just just to let you know, you made an eight year old boy's life. Um, she said that during your performance this year, uh, you gave a guitar pick to her nephew Nolan, who was on the side stage just watching, and he plays guitar, and it <clears throat> just absolutely thrilled him. It was such an honor for him, and um, he has it in a case, and he treasures it, and it's uh, now now an eight-year-old boy's most cherished possession because of Kenny Wayne Shepherd at the Chesapeake Bay Blues Festival in Annapolis. Well, that's awesome. I mean, you know, I know what it's like to be young and, and, and a fan of music and impressionable like that, so you know, it's good to hear. And, you know, because of my history and, and my story, being a, a young kid, soaking up all of this music and eventually turning into a professional musician myself, you know, I, I try and, and reach out to the to the young kids that I see at our shows in, in some way and, you know, just acknowledge them and, and show my appreciation to them and hopefully, you know, have a good impact on them the way people like Stevie Ray Vaughan had, had such a big um, impact on me. Well, it keeps the it certainly keeps the blues alive as well. And, uh, right. you know, I had I had listened to the blues all my life, but I never really, I guess, gotten the bug for it until about 20 years ago. I was in a bar in New Orleans and there was a guy called Rooster. I think it's Curtis Wheeler is his name. And he's just sort of a stalwart on um, on Bourbon Street. And I mean, it was just so raw, real and pure. And, and I just got hooked. And I think that's, you know, that really sort of speaks to to blues today. And I mean, and you've certainly looked to continue that tradition well yeah i mean that's kind of uh the thing about blues is you're supposed to play it with your heart man and you and you kind of put that out there and you know it's like the old hubert sumlin used to say and hubert was helen wolf's guitar player and he's like you know man if i'm playing it from my heart and i'm feeling it then the then the audience they got to feel it you know and that's <laughs> kind of the point you know the music can translate to anybody regardless of age because of that and it's you know that's how it's supposed to be done that's special. Well, you have, I'm not sure where you found the time with all of your touring schedule and your albums and everything else, but you and your wife, Hannah, have three daughters, God bless you, and uh, and two sons. Um, uh-huh. and, and I know how important family is to you, but I mean, how do you juggle it all? And you're right now in the middle of an 18-month tour supporting your latest album, uh, Lay It On Down, which right. you're about to have your one-year anniversary in a couple weeks. But how do, you, mm-hmm. how do you handle, how do you juggle the, you know, the touring and the and everything else with your family when you've got such a huge family? Well, you know, it's just all about balance. You know, um, when I got married, I made a commitment to my wife. And when we started having a family, I made a commitment to our children as well. You know, to be a father, to be a present father, to not be the guy that just packs up and and comes back, you know, after his kids are grown. And, you know, but I also made a commitment to my fans and to the people that are invested in my career. So um, it's just a matter of trying to strike the right balance between that. So, um, you know, I try not to, we try basically not to be out on the road for more than four weeks at a time before we'll go home and kind of reconnect with family for at least a week to two weeks. And, um, you know, I think the winter is kind of the downtime for touring. So, you know, we stay home for a few months throughout the winter and you know i just try and really make sure that my kids know that they're a priority my wife knows that she's a priority and uh and try not to stay gone for too long before i come back and and reconnect with them you know and then they come out on the road sometimes too depending on the tour and and what the travel looks like on that on that particular tour so you know we make it work and i think we do a really good job of it that's great well you were born in shreveport now where where do you call home now are you are you still down in louisiana yeah um i have a place right next door to my dad and uh and outside of shreveport louisiana Louisiana. And then we also have a place out in Los Angeles, which is where my wife's family is. So um, we're lucky that we have that we call home that are, you know are close to both of our families. That's special. That really is. Um, hey, in addition to the guitar, you're kind of a motorhead and a fan and a collector of uh, the muscle cars and everything else. Do you do the restoration work and all that on yourself, or is that? I participate in it as much as I can. So, like, I don't do paint and body work, which I actually would like to be able to do. I just haven't had time to try and learn how to weld or anything like that. But um, I design. I come up with the the design of what I want the car to look like. Uh, I'll help with the teardown process. Uh, I'm the one. I'm like the, I'm like the project manager 
temperature for all my cars. So I come up with a spreadsheet of all the parts that we're going to need to fulfill the vision. <laughs> and then um, I help put it together to the best of my abilities as well. There you go. Well, what, would you have any thoughts on the uh, way the future is looking toward electric cars? Uh, I, have a, I have a Tesla as well. So um, I think they're great vehicles. Um, I think the electric, there's a place for the electric car. I think there's still a place for uh, combustion engines. You know, I don't think it's like, I don't think we should have to choose between one or the other. And I don't think that's going to be the case, but um, there's no doubt uh, the way they've been able to, uh, you know, really improve on electric car technology lately. It's it's pretty impressive. They kind of scare the hell out of me about running out of juice in the middle of uh, some someplace. But it's uh, I know. Well, you have to get used to it. Like, you know, with my car, I've never had that problem. I've never found myself in a situation where I was about to be stranded on the side of the road because I ran out of energy in my battery. You know, All right. Well, look, I'll tell you, as we start to wrap up outside of music and outside of cars, what really what excites you? What are you involved in? Do you have any charities or any favorite causes that that you're? Yeah, we work. Yeah, we work with many different charities over over the years. And uh, there's one that's really special that we've done a lot of work with called MKI, which is Men and Kids International, which helps um, get, you know, kids that have like life threatening complications, uh, helps them to get the surgeries that they need to live a better life and, and improve their quality of life. And that's both children here in the United States and children all over the world. So it's a pretty uh, amazing organization. And we've done a lot of stuff with them over the years. And then I'm on the board of the Hot Rodders Children's Charity, you know, and so it's a bunch of car guys that, you know, will host events and raise a bunch of money and donate that money. We come together as car guys and then raise money and then donate it to various children's charities that help take care of kids. That's great. That's great. All right. Well, finally, I got to ask, what's next for Kenny Wayne Shepard after your show? Shows at the Rams head on Sunday and Monday. Well, you know, man, we're just going to continue hitting it on the road. I mean, we've got a full schedule. We're going to be out through the middle of August and we're going to take a, a week and a half break and then we're going to hit it again. And basically we'll be busy through the rest of this year, probably through the beginning of December. Uh, we just went into the studio in March and we've already recorded another new record. So that's kind of cool because we're ahead of schedule for the first time in my <laughs> career as far as making records go. So we'll have one ready to pull the trigger on uh, at a moment's notice, but I would anticipate it coming out, you know, the first quarter of next year probably that's fantastic well hey kenny thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon to chat with us i'm looking forward to seeing you once again at the ram's head on stage this weekend and for those that are listening there are probably no tickets left for the sunday night show but the monday evening show the last time i looked there was maybe like seven so go snatch them up if you want to see a blues legend in a joint that has the the crappiest seat is 48 feet from the stage um yeah you know i mean it, it really is it's, it's as you said it's a special place. Kenny Wayne Shepherd is a special guitarist, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here in Annapolis again in a couple days. All right, man. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. This has been the Maryland Crabs podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously. Go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.